The Looking Glass, written by Rodney's Johnson. A normal morning, or so he thought. Brought to you by Rodney Publishing. Andrew woke with a start. Sun streamed through his window. It was going to be a hot one. He could already feel the humidity clinging to his skin. Andrew yawned and hopped out of bed. It was Thursday, which meant coffee at Mrs. O'Malley's and a visit to Detective Crane about that case. You know, the one with the missing cats. He went through his usual morning routine. A quick shower to chase away the sleep, a quick glance at the sports section, and a breakfast of toast and jam, just the way he liked it. As Andrew stepped outside, he noticed something strange. The street seemed quieter than usual. He shrugged it off. It was early after all. People were probably still sleeping in. Andrew decided to walk to Mrs. O'Malley's. It was just a few blocks away, and the fresh air might do him some good. Besides, he needed his coffee fix. The bell above the door chimed as Andrew entered Mrs. O'Malley's coffee shop. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee filled the air, but something was off. Where was the usual morning crowd? Old Man Withers, who always sat by the window with his crossword puzzle, was nowhere to be seen. And Mrs. O'Malley, where was she? Mrs. O'Malley, Andrew called out, his voice echoing in the unusually empty space. Only the clinking of coffee cups and the soft hum of the refrigerator answered him. Andrew felt a shiver run down his spine. This was starting to feel weird, really weird. He walked up to the counter, his heart pounding in his chest. A young woman, her back turned, was wiping down the counter. She was a stranger, her face unfamiliar. Excuse me, Andrew asked, his voice barely above a whisper. The woman turned, her eyes wide with surprise. Can I help you? She asked, her voice unfamiliar. Andrew shook his head, his mind racing. Where was Mrs. O'Malley? And who was this woman? He mumbled something about needing to leave and practically ran out of the coffee shop. He decided to head straight to Detective Crane's office. Maybe the detective knew what was going on. As he walked, the streets remained eerily empty. He passed by Mr. Henderson's bakery, but the smell of fresh bread, usually wafting out onto the street, was absent. The bakery was closed, the windows dark. He finally arrived at Detective Crane's office, his heart pounding in his chest. He knocked on the door, but there was no answer. He tried the knob, and to his surprise, it was unlocked. Detective Crane! Andrew called out, his voice echoing in the quiet office. Papers were strewn across the floor, and the detective's chair lay overturned. It looked like something out of a bad detective movie. Where was Detective Crane? And why did his office look like a tornado had swept through it? Andrew felt a cold shiver run down his spine. Something was definitely wrong. Just then, a gust of wind slammed the office door shut, making him jump. He spun around, his heart racing. Was someone else in the office? He strained his ears, listening for any sound. That's when he heard it. A faint cry, almost like a whisper, calling his name. Andrew. The voice seemed to come from outside, through the now open window. He cautiously approached the window and peered out. The street below was deserted, just like before. Had he imagined it? Section 5 the park was never this empty. Andrew decided to check the park. It was usually bustling with activity at this time of day. Surely he'd find someone there. But as he approached the park, his heart sank. The swings hung motionless. The merry-go-round stood still, and the laughter of children was replaced by an unsettling silence. Even the birds seemed to have disappeared. He walked further into the park, his eyes scanning the empty benches the deserted playground, the silent fountain. Where was everyone? It was as if the entire town had vanished into thin air. Andrew felt a cold hand grip his heart. This was beyond strange. This was terrifying. He called out again, his voice echoing in the stillness. Hello, is anyone here? Only silence answered him. The silence of an empty town, the silence of a nightmare. Section 6. Where did everyone go? 
He spent the rest of the day wandering the desolate streets, his mind racing, his heart pounding. He checked the library, the supermarket, even the bowling alley, all deserted. It was as if the town had been holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. But what? As the sun began to set, casting long, eerie shadows across the empty town, Andrew felt a surge of despair. He was completely alone. Or was he? He suddenly remembered the voice that had called out his name from Detective Crane's office. Was someone watching him? He spun around, his eyes scanning the shadows, searching for any sign of movement. Who's there? He called out, his voice trembling. What's going on? Silence. He was alone. Or so he thought, though. Section 7. A Glimmer in the Distance Exhausted and terrified, Andrew stumbled back towards his house. He needed to get off the streets. As he turned the corner onto his street, he noticed something strange. A faint glimmer of light flickered in the distance, near the old abandoned factory at the edge of town. Curiosity or perhaps desperation drove him towards the light. As he got closer, he realized the light was coming from inside the factory. A single window glowed with an eerie, almost unnatural light. Andrew hesitated. The factory had always been a creepy place, even in broad daylight. But now, shrouded in darkness, it seemed even more menacing. He took a deep breath and cautiously approached the factory, his heart pounding in his chest. Something was drawing him towards the light, something he couldn't quite explain. Section 8 trapped. He peered through the grimy window. Inside he saw them, his friends, his neighbours, even Mrs O'Malley and Detective Crane. They were all there, standing motionless, their faces pale and drawn, their eyes wide with fear, and they were all staring at something behind him. Andrew spun around, expecting to come face to face with some terrifying creature, but there was nothing there. Just the empty factory yard and the dark, looming woods beyond. He turned back to the window, his mind reeling. What was going on? Why were they all trapped in the factory? He pressed his face against the cold glass, trying to get a better look. That's when he noticed it. A huge, invisible barrier separated him from the others. It was like a giant glass wall, stretching as far as he could see. Section 9 Can anybody hear me? He slammed his fists against the invisible barrier, his voice echoing in the night. Let me in! Can you hear me? But his words were met with an eerie silence. He could see their lips moving, their mouths forming words, but he couldn't hear a sound. Andrew watched in horror as Detective Crane pointed at him, his face contorted in a silent scream. Mrs O'Malley was crying, her hand pressed against the invisible wall. And then... He saw her. Little Emily, his next door neighbor, clutching her teddy bear, her big brown eyes filled with terror. She mouthed a single word, her voice lost in the silent void. Help. Andrew felt a surge of anger, a frustration of sheer terror. He had to get to them, he had to help them, but how? Section 10, Andrew's Nightmare. The last he saw of them was Emily's tear-streaked face as she was pulled away from the window, disappearing into the depths of the factory. The light in the window flickered once more and then went out, plunging him into darkness. Andrew sank to his knees, his cries swallowed by the night. He was alone. His town, his friends, his life, as he knew it, were gone. Trapped behind an invisible wall, lost in a silent nightmare and he was powerless to stop it. The next morning, the sun rose on an empty town. The streets were deserted, the houses stood empty, and the only sound was the wind whistling through the trees. Andrew's eerie day had become his terrifying reality. Where did everyone go, and would he ever find his way back to them? Thank you for your time. More short stories can be found on my YouTube channel at Rodney's Publishing. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe.